Hey, good morning to you. Good to see you guys today. Amen. Let's jump up on our feet right quick. Amen. Come on. I'm a little bit late up here talking to people. That's what I do. Hey, Big Dave. Little Dave. How you doing back there? Good to see you guys. I love you guys. Love you, man. Appreciate you. Doc, how you doing? Good to see you, buddy. Get ready for some great worship music this morning. Are y'all ready or not? You ready to have some church today or what? Amen. Come on. God bless you. We had a great first service. I'm in a series on the last day's churches. It's in the book of Revelation. There's seven of them. Today will be number two, but not in order. I'm not doing them in order. We started out with the ugly one, the one that judges. We want to pop him in the face first, okay? Now we're going to go the opposite direction, the one that loves. Amen? That's the church I want to be right there, the church that loves Jesus and loves people. Amen? So, yeah, praise the Lord. That's what I want to be. That's it. That's it. So we're going to look at that today. Probably help us all today if we'll listen and we'll learn a little bit from God's Word today. About We can use that in relationships. We can use it anywhere. These are going to be good for us today. Great worship music headed your way. And I'm glad you're at church. We had a really good crowd, probably like this or even more in the first service. Just bend your neck around. And look. This is July. This is July. This is, what a, this is what a good, strong church looks like in July. I'm telling you right down here in Florida. Man, I'm telling you. They ain't, they ain't a snowbird to be found. You can't find, well, I found one that's trying to act like one. Right there, amen. Let's put our hands together. Thank God we live in America. Don't give up on your country. Come on. Here we go. Let's have church this morning. If it's your first time, I'm Pastor Gary. You're wondering who I am, maybe. Who is that big guy? And if you notice, I'm getting bigger. I'm getting bigger. I went to my closet this morning or last night, grabbed a shirt, put it on. I was like, that ain't working. Put it right back. And I grabbed me one of these that always work. It always works. It's these kind of tent type shirts. And so here I am today. Anyway, so hopefully, uh, pray for me. Diet's starting real soon for me. You believe it or not? You don't believe it at all? Maybe, maybe. Hey, you know, Mitchell and Mallory got engaged. <laughs> He's like, oh my gosh, shut up, Dad. Also, we're really, really uh, proud of uh, Joel and Naomi. They got a beautiful little boy, Zeke, and they've got another little boy on the way right here. Coming on. Come on. Pretty exciting. Amen. So keep our band and the young families all in prayer. Let's, let's go. You ready to have church? All right. One more time. Let's thank the Lord we in church. Come on. Let's go. Get ready. Come on. Here we go. Let's do it. Boom. Good God Almighty, help you find me. Praise your name no matter what comes. I can't count the time I've called your names on broken night. You showed up, patched me up like you do every time. I get a piece I forget you keep coming around Ain't no way you ever let me down Good God Almighty, I hope you'll find me Praising your name no matter what comes Cause I know where I'd be without your mercy So I keep me 
Praise the Lord. Stay standing on up with us. Let's go right into another song this morning. Come on. Here we go. Good stuff. I enjoyed this. Got a special coming up in a little bit, too, that's brand new for our church today. But let's keep it rolling. Amen. Come on. You Make Me Brave. Unusual song, but I'll tell you what. Boy, we had a bad storm called Hurricane Ian, and uh, it was rough. It was tough. It left a lot of us sort of, you know, shocked, really. And, uh, but uh, life's that way too, isn't it? It's hard to get over that sometimes, that thing that's happened in your life. This song talks a little bit about that. You make me brave.
song. Amen. Praise the Lord this morning. Amen. Wow. I love that. Different. It's a different kind of song than a typical church song, but I love it. I love saying that. You make me brave, man. How many had some hard times in your life where you needed the Lord's help? I mean, I'm talking to really making this some hard stuff in my life. I need you, Lord. Maybe you're here today and that's how you're feeling. Listen, God is with you. He loves you. And I'm here to cheer that on. You hear me? And, uh, and we want to help you today. We want to be a blessing. We don't want you to come here and go, man, you know, those people, I hated it. I do, I do not want you feeling that way. We're going to do our best to love the snot out of you. Right, Jimmy? Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm just glad you're here today. One thing I do desire deeply in my heart, you're here today. You made it. You're this far. But you still might not, you, you still might not know if you going to heaven when you die. You still might not have that relationship with Jesus Christ. And I'm not here to put you down, man. I'm here to help you. I'm here to help you. He loves you to pieces. And you have the opportunity to, today to not leave lost, to go out there in that car and turn that key and go home the way you came. You can go home today knowing when it comes my time, I know that Jesus Christ is my Savior and my Lord. And my name is going to be written in the Lamb's Book of Life in heaven. And my goal is to, to help you get there today. You hear me or not? All right, that's the plan. It's, it's okay. Let's pray together. Lord, we love you. We honor you. We thank you. Lord, I just hear that song, You Make Me Brave. And I think of times in my own life. Lord, where you were it, I just couldn't make it without you. And back against the wall. And uh, Lord, I just thank you. And I know, Lord, I'm thanking you on behalf of a whole lot of people here today. But thank you, Lord, for giving us the courage. Thank you, Lord, for helping us through a, just, a, just an unbelievable hurt.
hurricane and, and the aftermath and the rebuilding and all of that. And some of us are still involved in that. But Lord, we've, we've been helped so much. We've made such a comeback. And I pray, Lord, you continue to help us. Help our spirit, Lord. Help our spirit to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And, Lord, we pray for folks today that uh, they don't know you as their Savior and Lord. And they're putting their faith in themselves or a church or good works. But, Lord, I pray today that every one of us leaving here, our faith will be in you, Jesus Christ, and no one else. Encourage us to do that, we pray, Lord. Help us, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Be seated if you would, Mr. Alexander Christie. Now look, we're usually on the floor when we do announcements, and I like it down there. But it's really dark for people online, so I'm going to try to do better. Okay? But it's probably not going to work. Not all the time. No, because I'm not good at change. Yeah, you can do it. How about that? <laughs> Amen. Come on. Thank you, buddy. Thank Love you, buddy. Appreciate you. Amen. Go get them. Well, good morning, everybody, and thank you so much for being here at Fellowship Church this morning. We're just so glad you're here. Um, if today's your first time here, please do us a favor and fill out that guest registry. It's right there on your worship guide that you got when you came in the door. Or you can meet us out at the Welcome Center after the service, and there's a little gift bag that they'll give you out there with sunglasses and pens and some fun stuff in there just about the church, and uh, we just would love to be able to stay in touch with you, send you a note of thanks for being here this morning, as well as a postcard whenever a big event is going on. So if you don't mind doing that, please do so, and uh, good morning everyone online, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, do us a favor, send us a Facebook message or an email, and we'll do the same thing for you. Um, and all, one little thing also about the guide, right there in the contacts area, towards the, like the middle bottom of it, there's a prayer line phone numbers on there. Just for some folks that may not know that, I wanted to give you a little reminder that there's a prayer line on there. So if you need some prayer, of course you can call the office. Dina and I will be happy to speak with you. But we also have people in this church that love you, want to pray with you, pray for you. So please, don't think twice. Call those numbers. And right after the service today, any young families, grandparents, we'd love for you to hang out, but we got to have some little ones running around. We are excited to have a taco truck here. We got a taco truck coming up. It's going to be pulling up right over here uh, where, the, where the new wing is going to go. Uh, incredible food. They do such a good job. You will be blessed. You'll love it. It's all for free. We just want to love on you, uh, have some uh, parents get to know each other, let the kids play, let them get to know each other a little bit. We're not going to be here all afternoon. It'll just be a little while, and we're just really, really would love to get to know you and meet you a little bit better. So right after this service, we're going to have that taco truck. And we got Bible studies going on here at Fellowship Church nearly every day of the week, most of the time. Um, right now, uh, Tuesdays and Thursday nights are, are off for the, uh, the co-ed study, but they're going to be starting up again a week from t uh, this coming Tuesday. So, you know, line up for that. There's a great new study starting on Thursdays coming up soon, so keep your eye out for that as well. Um, but we just can't encourage you enough to plug into these Bible studies. Great chance to meet new people here at the church, and also, as more, most importantly, get into God's Word, have a better understanding. Uh, we would just love for you to come, at, come on out for that. And Grief Shares every Wednesday here at Fellowship Church. It, it starts right at 4 o'clock. It's for anybody who's gone through that profound loss of loving, uh, losing a loved one. Uh, so if you or anyone you know is in that department, we would love for you to come on out, uh, get lifted up by others, get lifted up in Christ, and, and find some peace. So that's every single Wednesday, and that's at 4, and it ends at 6 o'clock. It is. It's, it's helped people. It's really, really made a big difference. And if you're someone further down the line, down the road, and have recovered already from that hurt, uh, you can still plug into this great ministry and be a blessing to others. So, you know, please take part if you can. And that ends at 6 o'clock, which is right in time for our fellowship uh, recovery, celebrate recovery time, right here out in the foyer. Uh, they're going to give you a, a beautiful meal every Wednesday at 6 o'clock, made for you by people who love you at no cost whatsoever. And then at 6.30, could they come in here for great music, time and God's word, testimonies before they break up in the small groups because they want to come alongside you, not in judgment, but in love and, and help you find Christ and follow Christ into dealing with your hurts, your hangups, your addictions. We just would really, really love for you to find some strength in those departments. So come on out on a Wednesday for an incredible service. 
And we've got women's prayer breakfast coming up on this Saturday. It's going to be a great breakfast. Uh, we're super excited to have you come on out, ladies. Please sign up on your way out today. Uh, th th it's going to be this Saturday, so this is the last week for you to sign up. Really would love to get a great head count so we have enough food for everybody. Miss Dina, Miss Pat, and Roger, and everybody, they put so much work into making this a great, great morning for you. So sign up for this. Be a part of it, ladies. You'll make some new friends, and you'll get some blessings out of it as well. And you'll be out of here by about 10 o'clock, so you've got the rest of your day. So please don't forget to sign up for that. And as always, we thank you so much for just supporting Fellowship Church by wearing the shirts, putting the hats on your head, putting the bumper stickers on your car. It makes a difference, pointing people here to Fellowship Church. So do us a favor, please. If you haven't done that yet, please consider it. Uh, just get the word out about the church. You just basically throw on a shirt, go to Walmart, and someone's going to notice it. Someone might ask you a question. But more than anything, it's, just, it's like repetitiveness that people will find Fellowship Church right here in the Bullseye Rotunda, and they can hear about the gospel of Christ. And you can be a part of that testimony and not even know it. So please, if you don't mind doing that, please help us out. And as always, we thank you for giving at Fellowship Church. We are a debt-free ministry because of you. Um, everything you see here has been paid for, and, and that's because of your generous giving. So we thank you for that. Uh, Give2FC.com, super easy way to give online. Uh, you can give once, uh, monthly, weekly, however you'd like to set that up. And many of you are already tithing through this app. So thank you for that. And uh, the P.O. Box, the, the, we've had that since day one. Uh, we thank you for sending the notes of encouragement. Everyone up north, we read every last one of them. We thank you for your notes. We thank you for uh, many of you that still are giving to the ministry while while you're out of town. Thank you so much. We love and appreciate you all and hope you have an incredible day. Don't forget the taco trucks so and don't come running out of here as soon as church is over. Hang out and make a new friend today. We'd love to have you all the young families. God bless you all. Good job. They better get come, on. come on, I'm hungry already. Yeah. It's for young families. I know I, that's, that's hard on you. That's why we have senior events and things like that. But this one, we don't do this often for young families. So we're just going to, we're going to love on them today. All right? And uh, kids, you get to eat. I'm not saying you're going to get one taco or something. You're hungry, you go get another one. Got it? Yes or no? And if they say, well, you can't do that, you say, wait a minute. Pastor Gary said I could. And then if they say, well, you can't, then go, well, I'm sorry, you can't. All right? <laughs> anyway, hope it works out for you. You got a great song coming. Who picked the song out? Mallory, actually. Mallory picked the song out. Mallory, where are you at? Oh, no. You're where? Yeah, you like this song? Yeah. Pretty powerful song, isn't it? Yeah, that's great. You need His to listen to her was more made often. For this song. Amen. We all heard it. I'm like, you're leading this, right? <laughs> yeah. What a great song. It's called Rest in the Father. Had you heard it? Do what? I have not heard this song. Mitch, I told Mitch this morning in the first service, he said, I said, what you singing? He says, you don't know it. I went like I do know it. I have heard it or something like that. And he said, no, you don't. I said, did you write it last night? <laughs> no, but it is a powerful song. What do you think of, Mitch, when you hear this song? Can you think of what, what, do, you, what do you feel? I mean, just no matter what, God's going to lead you through your troubles and the pain, whatever no, it is. No matter what, God's yeah, going to lead you through the pain. It can relate to every person. Every do person. what now? It can relate to every person. That's a good song. Let's just let's thank the band for a brand new song today. They're going to bless you. Powerful song. Come on. Still the 
Father, lay your worries down. He will calm your restless soul. Remind you he won't let you go. So when you feel that heartache cold, he's the safe place you can fall. Even in troubled water, even on shaking ground, you can find rest in the Father. to the water remember whose you are come back from the darkness run home to the light no matter the chaos his arms are open wide go back to the altar go back to the start go down to the water on shaking ground you can find rest in the father lay your worries down he won't leave your side he won't fail you now you can find rest in the father lay your worries down you can find rest How good was that song? My goodness. Wow. Wow. What a powerful song for us this morning. Let's jump up on our feet, guys. One last time this morning. What a great song. What a great job. And uh, all of you up there and vocals, both of y'all just pouring your heart out, letting it rip. I love that. I want you to know that I appreciate it. I appreciate you leaving it all on the field. Come on. Amen. Are we blessed here at Fellowship Church? Amen. Yes or no? Say. Come on. How many would say that song really spoke to me today, Pastor? That song helped me some right there. That's what I needed. That's what I needed right there. That's good, man. I love that. One last song, a great song about peace. 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 Peace be still. Amen. Let's sing the song, and then this morning we'll have our offering right after this. But I appreciate you. Come on, let's put our heart in it. Amen. I don't want to fear the storm 
great selection of songs today. Thank you. Wow. Praise the Lord. Amen. Remain standing with me if you don't mind. I'd appreciate it. Amen. Thank you. And uh, wow, what a great time of worship. One more time. Let's just thank the Lord. I need to let a little more out. Okay, come on. Wow. What a blessing. What a blessing. Amen. Thank you for giving to the Lord's work here at Fellowship Church. Uh, just a reminder, next Sunday, not today, but next Sunday, all the offering will go to the brand new facility we're planning on building. And uh, so we're almost, not quite, but almost raised $1 million. Can we thank the Lord? That's, that's a lot of money. <laughs> uh, that's $1 million you ain't paying about 10% interest on. Amen, yes or no? It, it would be awful. Wouldn't it be terrible? One, almost. But next week, we're getting close to that one million mark. It's probably going to be two and a half to do that building. Two, two and a half. I don't know. All I know is we got one million almost down. <laughs> Amen? This is fun. This is fun. You don't, don't worry about me. Poor pastor. He got all that on him. No, this is fun. I love this. And uh, it's going to be great. And, uh, but we're excited. That's next week. But today's offering, thank you for giving to our general ministry, helping our general ministry stay strong and do what we do. And uh, we appreciate it. If you can give cheerfully, we'll receive your gift. If for some reason you feel like you can't give it cheerfully, then we ask you to hang on to it. And uh, again, that's not to be ugly. It's just to be biblical. The Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. He told us not to give mad or you know, grudgingly. And uh, so I just believe him. Amen? And whatever, whatever comes in will be sufficient. It'll be fine. Amen. Let's pray together. Amen. I'm going to pray for us today. Lord, thank you for loving us. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. Lord, I just, I remember myself, Lord, what it was growing up with nothing. And to see how you bless my life, how you've helped me personally, Lord, in my life. And uh, especially through your word. So, Lord, thank you for your word. And, uh, but Lord, thank you for these folks today. Thank you, Lord, how that you've just blessed us all. When we're in our right mind, we know anything we have is because of you were gracious and kind to us. And so we appreciate it. And we'll give these back to you, Lord, today just to honor you and to, and to help this ministry. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Be seated if you would. Thank you so very, very much today for your giving. For you that are watching online or listening on radio, we just want you to know we appreciate you. Uh, thank you for your giving as well. Though you're not right here, uh, you matter to us, and uh, we appreciate it. How about send us a little note, a little note of encouragement, favorite scripture? I'd love to see that today. I'll read it when I get done here. But uh, thank you for your giving. It makes a difference, and we appreciate you. God bless you.
Thank you, Miss Karen, and everybody serving us. Appreciate it. Now, now Miss Karen, what was the name of that song? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I was not hearing it quite well enough. I, I usually do better than that. And it's all because of God's amazing grace. Amen. Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate you. Let's go to God's Word this morning. Are you all right or not? You're not going to sleep on me, are you? I'm scared that piano music puts you to sleep like that. Don't, don't let it happen. Here we go. Y'all ready or not? Say. Ready for, ready for the Word? Yes? Amen? Come on, let's go. There right, we go. You made it this far. You may as well come all the way home with me. Amen? Let's go to God's Word this morning. In a series on the last day's churches. You might wonder, where is that at? Well, it's in the book of Revelation. It's in the last book in the Bible, and there's seven churches, and seven letters are written to each of these churches, and they are from Jesus himself. And so they are real churches. They're literal churches at the time, but they're also prophetic. So much of what's said to the churches is also for churches down through the ages and churches today. And so it's Churches in the Last Days is the series. I've looked at one already, the church at Laodicea. And I'm not trying to drive you up the wall with crazy words here, but the church at Laodicea is the last church that's mentioned. I started with it first because it's a, it's a bad church. Got it? Yes. Have you ever heard of a bad church? Say, there's some bad churches, all right? And the church at Laodicea was a, a bad church. It was primarily a church that judged people. It's funny how people that judge don't judge themselves. Have you ever noticed that? Yes or no? And they might, they might see what's wrong with you, and you know what? They ain't got the problem you got, and so they stand in judgment over you because they ain't got that problem. But unfortunately, they got problems that probably you don't got. The only difference is you ain't giving it back to them, we hope, all right? So we don't want to be a church that judges. Say that out loud. We don't want to be a church that what? Did you understand that, yes or no? So if you're good at that, you ain't good here. Got it? Say, that just ain't going to fly here. You're welcome here, but that ain't welcome here. Y'all hear me or not? Say, it's not good in your marriage, is it, Kim? When I get that way, is it? It's terrible, ain't it, baby? <laughs> anyway, it's not good anywhere. Nobody likes judging. You know what I think? I think all judges that are studying to be a judge and go to be a judge on the bench, they ought to forget college and just go to church. Because they could learn how to do it there, couldn't they? I'm telling you, church people are geniuses at judging, all right? We don't want that. Got that pretty clear? You know who else doesn't want it? Jesus doesn't want it. All right? And so we're going to see that. We talked about that in one message. We'll hit it briefly, but we're going to move forward. Now, let's go with it, Raj. The Bible says, in the last days, uh, perilous times are coming. Many of us think those, that we're in the last days right now. I mean, certainly, these days are far different than any other days I've lived in my life on this planet. And the, and the things that they're doing, the anti-God, a lot of stuff like that, I've never seen it like it is today. However, however, you compare the United States to the rest of the world... And we're still so much better off and better than most places in this world today. So what we might feel is the last days, listen, people are suffering in other places that are unbelievable. And uh, so we still got it great. That's why I like to put our hands together. Let's do it again. And thank God we live in America. I love that. Now, come on. I'm free. I'm free to preach the word, man. This is fantastic. But there's a lot of pain going on in our world. The Bible says about the last days, the time's going to come when they're going to not endure sound doctrine, people in the church. But after their own lust, they're going to heap to themselves teachers or preachers or TV folk, you name it, that are going to have itching ears. And they're going to turn away from their ears from the truth and they're going to be turned to fables. I used to think this, and I still believe it a good bit, that the last days the churches would be just liberal. They wouldn't be preaching Jesus. And I believe that still. But I've also come to believe that churches in the last days will be preaching things other than Jesus. They'll be preaching, uh, for example, they'll teach you that because Jesus died on the cross and rose from the grave, he therefore now wants you to be wealthy, rich. He wants you to have money. They teach you this. It's called the prosperity gospel. But they teach it boldly. They really believe that, that since Jesus died on the cross and now you're a Christian, you're supposed to be rich. 
It's funny, though, when they teach that, they forget verses like this that talk about he that would be rich will fall into a snare. They forget things like it's easier for, for a, a, you know, a camel to go through an eye of a needle than it is for a rich man. I don't know how they get by with this stuff, making stuff up. God, Jesus didn't die to give me more problems in my life. <laughs> you understand that, yes or no? Now, we need money, not down on money, but Jesus died to save your sorry tale from a burning hell, okay? He didn't save you to make you rich. Got that? Are we clear on that gospel, yes or no? In the last days, you're going to be preaching all kinds of stuff. They're going to line you up front and pop you on the head and tell you you're healed. It, guys, we need to preach Jesus. Are y'all hearing me clearly today or not? Had, had some people new and probably got several new here today. It's good that you get to know where you're at. Understand? I don't want to be everything for everybody if it means i got to preach stuff that ain't true. Did I lose you again? Last day's church. We're going to find out a lot of this as we study these churches. But I don't want to be the judging church. There were nine attributes of the church that we studied two weeks ago. Nine. Let's put them up on the screen. Number one, well, they judge other people. <laughs> you don't need any practice on that one. Isn't that amazing how good we're at? We're good at that, ain't we? Yes or no, amen. Come on. Last day's church that we studied, the church at Laodicea, the judging church, well, they're proud. Well, you can never be a good judge unless you're full of pride. Number three, they doubt or change the word of God to fit whatever they feel. The judging church. They diminish or deny Christ. When you go to a church that stands for Christ, that loves the Lord, you ought not, it ought not be too hard to hear about Jesus. Did you, did, I, did you hear me, yes or no? Our songs about Jesus, our preaching is about Jesus. Our salvation is in Jesus. There's no other name given among men whereby we must be what? Saved. There's no other way to get to heaven but through who? Jesus. But some churches will say, well, you shouldn't say that. You're going to alienate people. I look at it totally different. I tell the truth, and that means people are going to hear me, and they're going to go to heaven. So why should I not tell the truth? The truth is God had one son. His name was, take a wild guess. Not that hard, is it? Well, what about all those other ways? They're lies. What? You can't say that. They're lies according to God's word. So, last day's church, if we one of them, we want to stay strong with God's word. Amen? We don't want to diminish it or we don't want to deny Jesus. Yes or no? Number five, they choose money over Christ. That's another reason when we take an offering here. I say, if you can't give cheerfully, keep it. Why? why, do, why am I, so why am I saying that? So that you can see that I choose you over your money. You matter to us. You matter to us. And you know what? I found that when I preach like that and take offerings like this, I never have lacked one time. Did you all know that, yes or no? Did you know probably in the Inglewood area, I'm just guessing, we're probably the best financially sound ministry in the whole area? Throw Port Charlotte in there too. I don't give a hoot. Why? Is that because I'm a genius? No. No, it's because people, I don't know. We, there's certain ways we do certain things, but bottom line, people give, and we do fine. Yes or no? And one of the keys is obeying God's word. Don't borrow money. Don't borrow money. I understand. I know people borrow money on houses. I get that. If you're going to borrow money on anything, it'd be a house. But you know that you'll still be servant to that lender. You know that, right? That will take your house if you don't make that payment. You do know that, right? So it's always best not to what? Borrow money. But it's certainly best for a church to never do that. Do you hear me or not? Say, just don't do it. Well, they said we need to. Tell them no. <laughs> We're not doing it. Amen? So that's helped us with our finances. But it all goes back to God, and he gets all the what? All the credit. Amen? So we choose Christ over money. We choose his word over money. Y'all hear me or not? Do I sound like I'm upset? I just like to be loud. No, I'm just kidding. Here we are. Come on. <laughs> Judging church, Sinful rather than righteous. We can judge people and come off like we're all that, but when you judge, you've you got the worst sin, and that's the sin of pride and arrogance. 
That's a horrible thing. There's one God and there's one judge and there's one mediator between God and man. His name is Jesus and it ain't you and me. Amen? Who's welcome at Fellowship Church? Anybody's welcome. We want them. Amen? But we're not going to change the gospel and the word of God to fit somebody's lifestyle. Well, the culture's saying this now. Well, the Bible says this now and it's been saying this. But we do that in a loving manner. But anybody's welcome. We're all, we all need help in this room. Amen. Keep looking. This church we talked about, they choose blindness over forgiveness. We can come out of our blindness if we want to. But we got to repent. And we can receive his forgiveness. God will forgive us for the things we've done in our life. But when we judge, we stay in our own sin instead of choosing to see our sin. Does that make any sense? They're left behind because Christ is coming again. I don't know when that is, but he said this church will be left behind and they're bound for hell. You're in the wrong place when you find yourself in a place of standing in judgment over other people. Y'all with me so far? So that was a little review of last, uh, last church, but let's, keep, let's move forward now. But watch thou in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of your ministry. And so now we're going to move forward in this little series with church number two. But before we do, I started the church number one, the judging church of Laodicea, with 1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 3. Y'all remember those verses? Remember where it says, though I speak with the tongues of men and, and angels and have not what? Love or charity. I'm become as a sounding brass or a what? A tinkling cymbal. Yeah. And though I, you know, give my body to be burned, but I don't have love, I'm nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, I can have faith to remove mountains. And I don't have love, I'm nothing. God couldn't have been clearer in his word. So he tells us this last church is a church at Laodicea. It's a church that judges. He said, I'll spew you out of my mouth. I'll vomit you out of my mouth. What a strong man. And then he tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, this is not the way you should be. And then he says this. Look at this. Love. How, can I take your little poll right quick? How many like to be loved? Any of y'all like to be loved? You, you sort of like love. That love feel nice. Isn't that nice? How many like love better than somebody judging you, treating you like a dog? See, and that's what God's word says. Look, love. God says, I am love. God is love. And love is of God. And he that loveth is born of God and knows God. He that loves not knows not God, for God is love. So now that's where we're headed, the loving church. Verse 4, love suffers long. This is what love looks like. Love is kind. Love is not envious. Love doesn't vaunt itself or is not proud. Love doesn't behave itself unseemly, seeks not her own, is not easily provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in truth. And who is truth? Jesus is truth. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Love bears all things. Love believes all things. Love hopes all things. Love endures all things. And when you say that last part really loud right there, love what? Gosh, y'all are sleeping on me one more time. Love what? Love never fails. So that gives us a clue of what the church should be like. Yes or no, amen? So let's check it out real quick. Let's go, Raj. Let's go to the last church. These people are sleeping on me. We got to go. Here we go. Man, I'm thinking of tacos. How about y'all? Come on. You better stay awake. If I see you sleeping and you're out there in the taco line, I'm going to pop you in the head. I'm going to tell you right now. Let's look at the church at Philadelphia. It's the church that loves. The church that loves. Philadelphia, the city, is called the city of what? It ain't no more. It's a city you can be shot in. You hear me or not? You know, I'm telling you, don't go to Philly. I'm just saying, how many are from Philly today? Y'all from Philly? Am I telling the truth? Would you, would you want to go down Philly and just stay in the city all night long in your car? Yeah, no, you don't want to do that. Amen. Here we go. <laughs> Come on. 
But some churches are like that. We don't want to be that church. Amen? Here we go. Let's go, Rog. Push me. Let's go with the, with, the, with the Bible. The church at Philadelphia, it's our second church in this series. To the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write, these things says he that is holy, this is Jesus, he that is true. Jesus is saying, saying, this is from me, this is my words to you. He that has the key of David, he that opens and no man shuts, and shuts and no man opens. Would you say that last part with me one more time? He that opens and no man and shuts and no man. People might wonder why, and it was me, I kept the church open during the pandemic. We never shut down. I don't know if you noticed or not. Why? They're telling you to shut down. And there was even people being arrested for keeping their churches open. Why, Gary, did you keep the church open during the pandemic? You don't love people. You're a mean man. No, I believe God's word. Pop it up. Two scriptures helped me in, in that decision. This was, and I didn't have to go to the Bible and try to find it. I already knew it. It was in me. See, Jesus is the Lord of this church, not the state. And not the nation, okay? That's the bottom line. It's the bottom line. We didn't force people to come to church. We didn't write you ugly letters and say, you're bad people if you wear a mask. We didn't say any of that garbage because most people didn't know what the heck was going on. Is that true? Okay? And people were getting sick and people were, you know, dying. I mean, we had people on our own staff, like Dina was in the hospital. How long were you on that tube? Eight days, and we thought we were going to lose Dina. So there was a lot of pain, a lot of hurt. But the bottom line is Jesus is the Lord of this church, and he opens and no man shuts. And you might say, well, that's crazy. Well, it ain't crazy. That was a, that was a scripture that guided me. And also common sense guided me. When there's a crisis in America, I think people might want to go to church. And get a little hope and get a little peace. Come on. So bottom line is, we let the word of God be the word of God. Amen. And that, that really helped me. It doesn't make me better than another church is shut down. All I'm saying is I'm telling the truth and this is what it is. I would, I would encourage you to try to let God's word be yay in your life. And if it says nay, let it be nay in your life. And it, it, it works pretty good if you do that. I don't do it perfectly, but that's a good thing. Keep going, Rog. The word Philadelphia literally means, say it with me, the what? And sisters. That's what we want here at Fellowship. Y'all hear me or not? We want you to be loved here. We want you to feel loved here. We want you to love back here. Got it? Say. That's what makes a church a great church. Love makes a church hot, baby. It does. It's fantastic. That's what you want. So it literally means the love of brother. So right out of the gate, that's what this church means. Jesus says, I know your works. Behold, I've set before you an open door. And here's that scripture again. And no man can what? No man can shut it. Guys, we didn't keep the doors open so we could get money. We kept the doors open during that pandemic so that folks here could get help. That's all. It did nothing motivated us other than that, to just get, get help and, and, and know that we're going to preach God's word and we're going to bring comfort. We're going to bring support. And you know, from day one, I had that band right behind me. Right there. And, it, and attendance got down to like, went from like, it was in the season, man. It went down from like 1,000 or 1,100 down to like 60. Yeah. But at least 60 found it. And it also let me be online with real people. I don't do good with just talking to a blank whatever. So I got to be with real people and I could communicate and people online could watch. And then word got out. Fellowship is open. And next week we had 160. And other churches were closed, and people came from other churches to our church. 
And I told them, when your church opens, if they're preaching the gospel, go back to your church. That's what I told them. (laughs) But anyway, based on these scriptures, no man can shut it. Now, look at that next one. For you have a little what? Strength. He's talking to this church. You have a little strength. And you've done what? You've kept my word. You've kept my word, man. That's who I want to be as a church. Even if we have little strength, I want us to be a church that keeps his word. Y'all hearing me today? And look at that next one. And you've not what? I'm not going to get up here and preach that you should be rich because when I do that, I'm denying the name of Jesus. I'm not going to make healing the thing at fellowship, the healing, the healing, the healing. We pray, we hope, we care for people. But guys, if you can't heal at Moffitt with whatever magic you got, then why are you running it on Sunday morning at the church? I'm telling you, it's common sense. Why can't you go to Inglewood today? I'm sure, that, I'm sure they'll give you a list of cancer people all over this city and all over these towns that would be happy to have you come out of the house this afternoon and take care of it. Guys, we're all going to die. We're all going to die. One thing we don't want to do is start making stuff up. Am I being too ugly today? Okay. Thank you, buddy. He said, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews, which, which is another good word. Jesus is saying in this scripture, there's a lot of people in the church and in churches that are phonies. I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they're Jews and are not, but they do what? Lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before your feet and to know that I have what? Here's a key word. Loved you. We can see what Jesus loves. I mean, I'm not saying this is easy to study the scriptures like this, and there's a lot I'm not saying, but uh, we're getting something. Because you've kept the word of my patience, you've kept my word, I will keep you from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which you have. Let no man take your crown. A lot of scripture, a lot of stuff right there. Him that overcomes, will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. He shall go no more out. I will write upon him the name of my God. That's what I want. And the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God. And I will write upon him or her my what? My new name. Do you see how Jesus loves this church? Yes or no? Have we seen any spewing out of your mouth? Have we seen any condemnation? He had nothing but good things to say about this church. Y'all hear me or not? There's seven of them. There's only two, I believe, if I'm not wrong, two only did he not have condemnation for. That's not good math in the church business. (laughs) Two out of seven. (laughs) I want to be one of those two. You hear me or not? One was the church at Philadelphia. The other one was, I believe, the church at Smyrna. And they were a church that suffered great persecution. So he didn't condemn this church. He praises this church. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. We'll fly now, Rod. Here we go. What does the loving church look like? I just got a little little breakdown for you. What does the loving church look like? What should it look like? We saw the judging church. What should a loving church look like? Well, loving right there. That's what a loving church should look like. It should look like what? Loving. Yeah. If I come across, now I know I've got a personality, I'm loud, my personality, my, I may be, but guys, man, I don't want to come across as hateful. I don't want you to leave church saying, boy, Gary just hates us. I preach God's word tough sometimes. I want to line up with Jesus, and the ones that I want to think that I've, that I've really, you know, really ticked off at them is the phony Christian people, because that's what he did, Okay. But in general, I want to come across as a loving person. Y'all hear me or not? I ain't saying I do the best at it, (laughs) but that's what I want to do. That's why I hired Alex. (laughs) Alex is a very loving person, isn't he? Very loving. But Alex works with me, so don't forget that. (laughs) So that's my heart. That's what I want for us. You hear me? 
I want us to be this kind of church. But what does a loving church look like? Humble. It's hard, it's really hard to judge people when you're humble. When you're practicing humility, it's hard to point out somebody else's flaws. Does that make any sense? Be humble. Number two, the loving church believes God's word. We're not a loving church if we take God's holy word and we somehow make stuff up. That's not very loving to me. It's not loving him, is it? Yes or no? I know you wrote this, but it means this. I don't think that's right. Loving church confesses Jesus Christ as Lord. Y'all hear me or not? Well, I ain't used to y'all talking about Jesus. Well, you just in a church that didn't talk about Jesus. You in one now that does. The Bible says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and your might, and love your neighbor as yourself. See, he's first. He should be the one that's getting the praise around here. He should be the one that's getting the credit around here. Y'all hear me or not? See, we confess that Jesus is Lord. What does that mean? That means if if the stuff hits the fan sometimes and they say shut down your church, well, Jesus, you're Lord. And we're going to do the hard thing if necessary, and we're going to do the right thing. You hear me or not? Even with building a building, I get, I get stuff all the time sent to me on how they can bring a crew in here and they can, they can come out and see all the church folk, and we can, get, we can raise millions of dollars. But I don't want hit men coming to your house. How many ever were in a church like that and that happened? You had some people come to you. <laughs> Look at the hands going up. You know what I mean? Well, you might say, well, that's the way y'all did it. That ain't the way we do it. Got it? Yes or no? When we say we confess Jesus as Lord, it means we want to do things the right way. We want to do it by the book. And even if it's slower, we'll get there when we get there. Amen? Faith-driven. We believe God, period. A loving church believes God, period. But we don't, we don't add to faith things that we want for money or riches or, I mean, riches or healing. And we're not, that's just not the way it's going to be. Well, you don't have a new home because you ain't believing God enough. No, you don't have a new home because maybe you need to sell some cars you got. Maybe you need to get another job. That's okay. Amen. Just we want to be faith in his word, not crazy faith. Loving church is righteous and pure. Not perfect, but we want to do the right thing. A loving church. This was the church at Philadelphia. And the church that's a loving church is a what kind of church? Had a sweet lady. There you are this morning. Your first name again? Yes. Bobby, I thought so. And Bobby used to come to the high school, right? And Bobby is back today, told me. Say that again. You're a school bus driver. Yay. Yay, Miss Bobby. That's awesome. That's awesome. But you know what? I hope it's okay. But she, she wanted to make sure today with me that she was saved. And so she and I had a little time together. And I told her every service, every service that I'm here, I always give people the opportunity to be what? See, I think a loving church ought to give people the opportunity to be what? Yeah, it's saved. I mean, that's what it's about. Amen. I'm not trying to put us up. Guys, this is the church at Philadelphia. This is the church I want to be. This is the church I want to be. Got it? So that's the loving church. Rog, we're going to quit. I got a couple more minutes, and I'll go. I'm going to zip through these, Rog. Can I do it, buddy, with you? I'll do these things that's written on the screen, but I can't read every scripture. Can you be ready to go? You think you can do that? You really are the one that slows me down. You know that. (laughs) It's always your fault. You know that, right, Raji? Here we go. Let's go. (laughs) Here we go. What does a loving church do? Love people. We got that one? A lot of scriptures. Every one of these scriptures has the last days in them. Let's just do one. Let's look at this one. And the Lord make you increase and abound in love one to another, Toward all men, even as we do toward you. To the end, 
he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father. Say it with me. At the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. So as we're talking about churches in the last days, what should a loving church and a good church do in the last days? We should do what? Love people. Because that's what he told us to do. Yes? So now every one of these has scriptures, but I'm going to go through them. But you're just going to have to trust me that every one of them has scriptures backing up every one of them. Let's look at another one. Don't judge people. Okay? Judge nothing before the time till the Lord comes. Don't judge people. Wow, I'm supposed to be a fruit inspector. You're a, you're a lunatic, okay? Churches teach you that. Yeah, but you're not supposed to hang around with this person. I ain't saying you're going to be hanging around with everybody, but you can love people. You can make people not feel like dirt, like you better than them say. Don't judge people. Just don't do it. You're wrong, period. I don't give a hoot. Number three, and I do it. I'm not saying you're just wrong. I'm wrong. Number three, be active in your church. i got to say this one, Raj. See, you're doing it again. <laughs> Another reason we didn't shut our, da- our church down. You might say, why are you saying all that? I don't know. I'm just thinking it's important to keep the church open. Let us consider one another and provoke unto what? Love and to good works. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much more as you see what? The day of the Lord approaching. So that's another, I had two scriptures, that other one and this one, without looking them up, I just knew them. Uh, We can't shut the church down because people still need to be able to do this instead of isolate totally. You hear me or not? There you go. Now you know. Number four, a loving church remembers Jesus' death and resurrection daily, and especially through communion. Got it? A loving church is going to talk about the resurrection, the death and burial and resurrection of Jesus. Y'all hear me or not say? Instead of saying, I don't like those messages. You just need to get with the program. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Number five. We're to be committed to living for Jesus Christ. A loving church is to live for the Lord. Okay? A lot of scripture. Preach the word. Wait, pop that one. See, you're doing it again. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. You might wonder, why do you not get up here and bash Joe Biden every weekend? It would be so much fun. I could do it without any notes. Because that's not what church is about. This is about preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Did y'all hear me or not? Say. That's not what it's about. It's not what it's about. Y'all hear me or not? Say. Y'all good? That's not why we're, I could do that and we'd double our crowd. Well, I'm, a lot of people would come. They'd want to cheer. Yeah, yeah, Clark. I'm conservative than most people. More conservative than most people. But we're going to preach Jesus here. We need lost people here. We need people that need the Lord coming to this church. Amen? And us going to love them to the Lord. Amen? So anyway, that's why I do it. Keep looking. That mean I don't want to get up here and hoop and holler, and I'm telling you. Make the things of God a priority in your thinking. If you're a loving church, keep his, his ways in your thinking and at the forefront. Keep looking. Number seven. See, Rod, you're doing it. Number seven. Keep short sin accounts. A loving church is a church as a body where if we have sin in our life, we confess it. Y'all hear me or not? A loving church is not a church that we have crap in our life and we don't give a hoot, but we're going to get up here and tell you how to do it. That's not a loving church. We need to keep, and I have to do this regularly. I tell people I'm the biggest sinner I know. I am. I'm the biggest sinner I know because I know me. And me ain't good sometimes. Or I could sit here and say, you're the biggest sinner I know. I don't think that's a loving thing to do. Keep short set accounts. Keep looking. Number eight, share the message of Jesus with your family and your friends. A loving church is going to share the message of Jesus. Did y'all hear me? Am I driving y'all up the wall today? You look like it. It's not a loving thing. To 
say, well, we can't talk about religion and politics. How about this? Just don't talk about politics. Instead of religion, why don't you, I had a young man, a beautiful young man. He's come to Christ. He started coming a year ago and hearing the gospel. He then later, he and I became friends. He was one of our football players. He received Christ as his Savior, as Lord. Then he wanted to be baptized. I baptized him in my pool. And today that young man brought another young man to our church. He's a young man that he grew up with since he was three years old. And after the church service was over, the young man went his way. But the, the, the man, young man I knew came up. And he says, uh, Pastor, how do I share Christ with others? How do I, how do I, how do I like tell my friend about Jesus? How, I, how do I do that? You know what I told him? I said, tell him. I said, first of all, make sure of your own salvation and how that all happened. I said, you share with him what Jesus did in your life. Don't make something up. Tell the truth. See, that's what we need to do. We need to share the message of Jesus with friends and family. Got another young man. Where are you at, Randy? Randy, wave at me. Randy's 15 years old. Randy started coming to this church. First Sunday, Randy came up. You had questions, remember? And you sort of said a couple of things, and I corrected you. Because all roads don't lead to heaven, Randy. One road leads to heaven, Randy. His name is Jesus. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's the way it is, Randy. But the good thing is there's a road, baby. There's a road. Amen. There's a road. And so Randy listened to me, didn't hate me. Randy listened. He put his faith in Christ. Randy was baptized on the beach. Is that right? Amen. Praise the Lord, Randy. We're proud of you. Randy now comes up to me today. It's his last Sunday before he's going back home. And uh, he comes here in the summer for Grandma. And Randy just looked at me and big old eyes. And he told me multiple times how much he loved me. He told me I was a father figure to him. That's what you said, son. I know I'm putting you on the spot. But he has my phone number, and you can call me. Because he and I went out to eat, and we talked. And I'm just trying to say, this is what makes a loving church. Not the pastor. You can do that, right? Yes or no, amen. Say, that's what we want to be. That's what we want to do. We want to be that kind of church. Got to quit. Number nine, comfort and encourage others. A loving church should comfort and encourage other people. Yes or no? People should matter. Say, people matter. People matter. People matter. People matter. You know what church is about? It's all about the people. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. Church is about loving him and loving them. Church is about people, man. It ain't about the rules. It ain't about the money. It's about you folks. Y'all hear me or not? Sounds like a good plan to me. Amen. Come on. And number 10, a loving church patiently anticipates the coming of Christ. Let's look at that scripture. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waits for the precious fruit of the earth and has long patience for it until he receives the early and latter rain. Be ye patient. Establish your heart, for the coming of the Lord draws nigh. So we, yeah, praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. We should be, we should anticipate the Lord's return, but wait a minute. We should patiently anticipate it. What does that mean? A loving church isn't going around going, I wish Jesus would come today. Wish Jesus would come. That's not a loving church. When Jesus comes, all those people are on their way to hell. Or they're going to be going into the tribulation or suffering all kinds of grief and pain. Who I don't know how you figure all that, where that timeline is. But we should be wanting the Lord's return, but be patient with it. How many were, you were a hell raiser on your way to hell before Christ saved you? Can I see somebody? I mean, you were a burning baby, okay? Aren't you glad so, that he was patient enough for you to get saved, Pete? A loving church is saying, Lord... I want you to come, but I want mama to have a chance to be saved. I want my brother, 
on my friends. So, Lord, I know no man knows the day or hour, but still, you were patient with me. Would you be patient with them and long-suffering? That's just my opinion, but I think that's part of a loving church. We're done today. Let's thank the Lord for his word. That was pretty good. We did good. Yeah. All right. Boom. Loving church. But it was from the Bible. Let's go ahead and stand on up. You might say, I love in church stuff. Did you know I get criticized? We get criticized from other churches occasionally because we love Jesus and we love people. We talk about love. Love, 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 love. <laughs> Ain't nobody meaner than me. If I can love, we can all do it. Amen, yes or no? Come on. We don't make any apologies for saying we love Jesus and we love people. Amen? Say it out loud. We love and we love. One more time. We love and we love. Can you say it one more time? We love and we love. That's a church that we need to have in this town. Amen? We're not better than other churches? No. But let's be the best we can be. And look around. Would you bend your neck around? I believe this is going. We might have a record in July in attendance today out of 21 years. I believe that we broke a record today. This is great. Thank you. Thank you for coming to church, man. Come on. I guess the, the country ain't going to hell in a handbasket. When people start going back to church, maybe that's a good thing. Amen. Come on. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you for a good morning. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the patience of the folk. I know them having to listen to me like this can't be easy sometimes. But Lord, I pray your word will find good ground in our heart. And Lord, you knew my heart and you know my heart. I don't get it right. Many of these things on the screen, I don't get them right. But Lord, your word is your word. And I have to get in line. I have to do right. So help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. To be a man that loves. A man that loves you. A man that loves his wife. A man that loves his young'uns. A man that loves his friends, his family, his church family. People I don't even know. Help me to be a man that loves like you would love. Lord, I know people were tickled when they saw you. They just ran to see you. Lord, I want to be that kind of man. That folks, when they see me, they'll light up, not run the other way. Help me, Lord, I pray. Help our church to be that way. Help us, Lord, we pray, to create an environment here that's based on love. And God, you are love. We know if we're doing anything right, Lord, it's love. Because you are love. You are love. So help us, Lord, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. With heads bowed, this is what we do here. We don't let you run out of here. I'm gone. No, 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 no. We want you to make sure that you know Jesus as your Savior. With heads bowed, we're not here to pick on you. We're not going to drag you down front, make a spectacle. We're not going to do any of that. But you know what? It'd be a shame today if you'd walk out of here and not know Christ as your Savior. What a shame that would be. Would you please not do that today? The Bible says if you'll confess with your mouth Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. You'll never perish in a place called hell. Would you put your faith in him today? It says if you'll confess with your mouth, I'd like to lead you in a prayer right where you are. And would you take your mouth today and pray to him? And it says would you be to believe in your heart, down deep in your gut. That just means that this is, this is real, this is true. Not just some quick emotional thing. It's a fact that you're going to die one day. It's a fact. Without Jesus Christ, you have no hope of eternal life in heaven. It's a fact. But he says, if you'll put your faith in me, you will have everlasting life. Would you do that today? Would you pray with me right now? Remember that first point? Humble, 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 humble. Being grateful. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. Would you tell him that? You're not the sinner, Lord. I am. Forgive me, Lord, I pray. And Jesus, I want you to know. Would you tell him? 
I want you to know from me to you that I believe in you. I don't understand it all, but I believe you are God's only son. I believe you did die on a cross for my sins, not yours. And I believe you rose again from the dead. And Lord, again, I believe you love me and care for me. So Lord, I put my faith in you today, not in a church, not in my good works, not in a preacher, but in you, Jesus Christ. Save me today in Jesus' name. Amen. With heads bowed, how many would lift a hand and say, Pastor Gary, I said that with you, Pastor. I meant that. I meant that today. Can I see your hands? I meant that. I love that. I love that. I'm just looking around. Not, to, not I love that. God bless you today. God bless you today. God bless you today. You're in a church that loves the Lord, and we love you too. Got it? You matter to us. And we're all delighted for you today. Lord, bless us as we go our way. Help us have a good afternoon. And Lord, bless our young families with the young ones, with the little ones. And Lord, we're going to give these young families a break, Lord. It's your, it's your money, Lord. You provide it. But Lord, we're going to feed them. So bless that luncheon that's going to take place right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we thank the Lord one more time? Good day today. I enjoyed you. I did. I liked it. Praise the Lord. God bless you. I'm here to help you. But don't take too long because I've got to go eat a taco. No. <laughs>